Deep in the Icelandic wilderness, two sheep farmers fill their days grinding out grueling tasks and responsibilities, unaware of the sinister presence in their midst. When one of their sheep gives birth to a highly bizarre lamb, they choose to regard it as a miracle, a second chance to redeem lost happiness, a happiness that becomes short-lived when the strange forces at play resurface to reclaim what's rightfully theirs. Lamb is an Icelandic film written and directed by Vladimir Johansson and distributed by A24. In typical A24 fashion, the film is deliciously strange and highly unorthodox, just not in the way that I expected it to be. Lamb suffers from what I'm going to call it comes at night syndrome, where marketing manipulation completely misrepresents the genre and the mood that the filmmakers aimed for. If you've seen the trailer for Lamb, the distorted Beach Boys tune and unsettling atmosphere may have enticed you to watch what appears to be a dark, unsettling A24 horror movie, something in the same family as Hereditary or The Witch. While there are some tasty morsels of darkness and horror in Lamb, which we'll discuss in the spoiler section, they represent only a minuscule portion of the film and are hardly enough to sustain a viewer searching for a disturbing thrill ride of a movie. Lamb belongs more in the category of meditative family dramas, a methodically paced cinematic Edward Hopper painting and Icelandic folktale mashup. That isn't to say that Lamb is a bad movie or that it's not worth watching. Just like It Comes at Night, Lamb succeeds in accomplishing what it sets out to do, but the key is to enter the film with adjusted expectations or you could run the risk of being misled. Vladimir Johansson's slow-burning tale centers around Maria and Ingvar and their quiet farming life. The opening sequence teases the picturesque setting and the strange entity stalking their flock before leaving us with the childless couple as they go about their work and their dining room conversations on the possibility of time travel, signaling dormant desires to return to the past. This initial chapter does little else besides establish the drudgery of the couple's life. They have their work, their obligations to their livestock, and little else. Each day is a repeat of the last. Wariness and a vague sense of dissatisfaction sag their shoulders and physically wear them down until the birth of a peculiar lamb breathes new life into them, a sudden injection of energy and a refined purpose for their toils. In keeping with Johansson's directorial style, the uniqueness of the baby lamb is shown but not told. For the rest of the first chapter, he shrouds the lamb in mystery, until he reveals its human limbs. Ada, the lamb-human hybrid, reaches toddler age in chapter 2, and the sight of her alone taps into a nerve of uncanniness that gives the film some nuance of novel strangeness, but fails to capitalize on it, in my opinion. The Icelandic director rejects the notion of conventional storytelling structure and practices, which I can certainly respect, However, his choice to orient the viewer back into the mundane swing of the couple's life is a puzzling one and leaves behind a certain hollowness. Maria and Ingvar reclaim past happiness, Ada being the missing puzzle piece as we come to learn that they had lost a child years prior. Their new lamb displaces that lost and all is well and good for a while, but the conflict needed to fuel the story into second gear is scarce. We get some of it when Ada's true mother comes calling for her and Maria answers with a shotgun blast. We get some more of it at the arrival of Ingvar's brother, Petter, and his understandable reservations towards Ada. The addition of the brother character works in theory as it addresses the need for a pair of outside eyes on Ada. Maria and Ingvar's relationship to Ada is built on raw emotion, so it makes sense to add Petter's more rational perspective to the sheer absurdity of the situation. Throughout his time in the film, Petter continually makes aggressive advances towards Maria, and to me the director's motive for including these scenes is a bit confusing, but if we choose to view Maria as the story's protagonist, one possible interpretation is that Petter represents an option for Maria to reject the unnatural family life that she's chosen and pursue an opportunity for a potential family life that's within the bounds of human nature, so to speak. In the end, however, it appears that Petter's primary purpose is just to provide some plot convenience, to separate Maria and Ingvar before the ultimate climax. And if you haven't seen Lamb and are planning to, right about now is where you should pause the video to avoid the spoilers and come back after you've seen the movie. 
The climax to Lamb is a real bullet out of left field, and I mean that in a good way. Ada's true father, a grotesque half-ram, half-man straight out of a Greek myth, appears and shoots Ingvar in the throat, and then hauls Ada away. The pure shock factor is enough to make the scene work, but the extra salt rubbed in the wound when we see Ada's dismay at leaving makes the scene quite compelling. The payoff of the creature's design and the jarring effect invoked by its sudden entrance delivers on the dark fairy tale aesthetic promised by the trailer, but it's so brief that it left me slightly disappointed afterwards. The climactic sequence wouldn't have been as effective if we were given a glimpse of the monster beforehand, but perhaps the film would have been better served if some emphasis was subtracted from the mundanity of the characters' lives and added towards the surrealist iceberg lingering under Lamb's surface. At the end, Maria is left to pick up the broken shards of her life, and without concrete answers, we're left with a compelling question. What did it all mean? Is Lamb a cautionary tale warning against the perils of manipulating nature? Or is it simply a weird story about a couple raising a baby lamb child? We can see traces of mythology in the material, and the director himself acknowledges that Lamb's story is heavily influenced by Icelandic folklore. That would suggest that if we were to mine any meaning from Lamb's buried layers, it would start with its human characters. My take is that Lamb is primarily about accepting the loss of a child. Prior to the arrival of the Lamb hybrid Ada, we know that the couple have a deceased daughter also named Ada. Giving their lamb the same name paints a subtle picture of unresolved grief, and although the loss occurred some time before we meet our characters, their grief is still very much present. Marie and Ingvar haven't reached the final stage of acceptance. Their sullen mood in the film's beginning reinforces their depressive state and rubs some of it off on the viewer as well. In retrospect, we know something is wrong with them, and we aren't entirely sure what it is until they accept the lamb into their home and begin raising it as if it were their own child. The crescendo of their pain comes in the scene when they're being followed by Ada's sheep mother. Maria unleashes a thundering shriek at her. Catharsis flows in that moment as she rips the bandages off her still bleeding wounds and jettisons the civilized facade. Her animal instincts possess her a mama bear protecting her deformed cub. The forces driving her are as primal and ancient as life itself. At this point, we understand what's at stake. The absurdity of the lamb hybrid coupled with this response produces greater empathy for the characters. We may want the characters to maintain their happiness, but we still know that the source of it is rooted in an impossibility. Humanity will never have the power to best nature. The rationality of believing the sustainability of their situation is closely linked with the grieving stage of bargaining, the yielding to a false sense of hope and willingness to accept a compromise, any compromise, no matter how outlandish it might be. It's at the intersection of trauma and irrationality where the story of Maria and Ingvar becomes tragic. In the film, they have no alternative coping methods. Common tips for dealing with grief don't apply as easily for them. In the isolation of their setting, they have no support groups or counseling centers at their disposal. They only have each other, a shared grief to stew in, making them all the more vulnerable when a bargain for an Ada alternative is given to them. As with any folktale, the fantastical elements of this film are purely metaphorical. The origin and background of the lamb child and the man ram are inconsequential. The meat of the story is that there is no acceptable shortcut to the grieving process. If there's anything to be learned from Lamb, it's that no matter how strong the desire is to transcend nature, giving it to the hubris that believing it's possible will always lead to ruin.